All right, get ready to decode the secrets of today's hiring landscape. Mm -hmm. We're diving deep into applied psychology and talent management. Okay. Think of it as your cheat sheet to snag those rock star candidates. That's right. We're talking about moving beyond simply filling a position. Right. This is about understanding the psychology behind attracting, securing, and retaining the best fit for your company. And I have a feeling this isn't your grandma's recruitment playbook. No. Forget sifting through endless resumes. Yeah. This is about a whole new approach. It absolutely is. The book lays out a talent supply chain that completely reframes the hiring process. It's not just about who applies, it's about strategically attracting the right people from the get-go. Okay, intrigue level officially spiked. Mm -hmm. So how does this talent supply chain actually work? Think of it as a four-part strategy. Attract, source, assess, employ. Okay. Each stage builds on the last to create a streamlined, efficient process for finding your ideal candidate. All right, so let's say I'm trying to fill a key role in my company. What does this look like in action? Well, imagine this. Instead of just posting a generic job description, you're creating a buzz around your company culture. Okay. Think showcasing employee stories, highlighting career growth opportunities. Right. Even crafting social media content that resonates with your target candidate. That's a tract. So it's almost like marketing, but for talent. Exactly. You're selling potential candidates on the experience of working for you. Right. And this is crucial for attracting those highly sought after passive candidates, the ones not actively looking for a new job. Passive candidate, those are the ones who are already killing it somewhere else, yeah. right? Why are they so important? Because they're often the most talented and engaged. They're not just looking for any job, they're looking for the right opportunity. And to snag them, you need to stand out from the crowd. This is where having a killer employer brand comes in handy, right? Absolutely, think of it like this. Your employer brand is your company's reputation on steroids. It's what differentiates you in a crowded market. And according to this research, a strong employer brand can actually reduce your cost per hire by up to 50%. Wow, 50%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that's a number that gets my attention. Right. So once you've piqued the interest of these passive candidates, how do you actually get them in the door? This is where Source comes in, right? You got it. Source is all about strategically tapping into the right talent pools. Okay. And while job boards and company websites still have their place, you've got to think beyond traditional methods. Mm -hmm. We're talking employee referral programs, targeted LinkedIn outreach, even industry events. Employee referrals are fascinating to me. It's like getting a personal recommendation from someone you trust. Mm. But does the research say they're actually more effective? They absolutely can be. Okay. Applied psychology and talent management cite studies that show employee referrals lead to faster hiring times and increased retention rates. Interesting. Think about it. A referral is essentially a stamp of approval from someone within your company. It's a powerful tool. It makes sense. Someone's less likely to bail on a new job if their friend vouched for it. Exactly. And it reduces your reliance on those expensive recruitment agencies. Right. But there's a right and a wrong way to do referrals. Okay. We'll get into the nitty gritty of how to maximize their effectiveness a little later on. Okay. So we've attracted some top tier talent. We've sourced them from a mix of channels. Now it's time to separate the wheat from the chaff. Mm. Bring on the assess phase. Here's where things get really interesting, especially with the rise of AI. Yeah. Forget just scanning resumes. Imagine a world where algorithms can analyze a candidate's online presence, on. assess their skills through gamified tests, even predict their cultural fit. Hold on. Analyze their online presence. Are we talking about social media stalking here? Not quite stalking, <laughs> but definitely a deeper dive than ever before. AI-powered tools can analyze a candidate's LinkedIn profile, blog posts, even their Twitter feed to get a more holistic view of their skills and experience. It's both fascinating and a little unnerving. It's like the hiring process is becoming this high-tech game of strategy. Yeah. But isn't there a risk of bias creeping into these AI assessments? What about those who aren't as active online or who don't fit a certain mold? That's the million dollar question and one we need to address head on. While AI can eliminate some human bias, it can also perpetuate existing inequalities if not carefully designed and implemented. So it's not a magic bullet. Not at all. 
We need to make sure these tools are fair and equitable. Right. For example, some companies are anonymizing applications, removing names and demographic information to ensure a level playing field. That makes sense. It's an ongoing conversation and one we'll delve deeper into later in the episode. This is why I love our deep dives. Mm -hmm. We're not just scratching the surface. We're really getting into the complexity. Yeah, yeah. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we've got a whole employee phase to unpack, right? Yes. And what about internal recruitment? Right. Don't tell me we're leaving our own employees out of the mix. It's not a chance. Internal recruitment has its own set of rules and surprisingly its own psychological factors at play. Okay. But for now, let's move on to the employee stage and how applied psychology and talent management suggests companies navigate this critical final step. Sounds good to me. Let's get into it. Yeah. All right, so we've navigated the choppy waters of attracting and assessing top talent. Right. Now let's talk about actually reeling them in the employee phase. This is where we see a major shift in power dynamics. Okay. Gone are the days of companies holding all the cards. Yeah. Today's candidates, especially those coveted passive ones, want to feel valued and respected throughout the hiring process. It's like dating. Nobody likes to feel like just another number. Exactly. And yeah. just like in dating, first impressions are crucial. Right. Um, applied psychology and talent management actually uses the term candidate experience, okay. which encompasses every interaction a potential hire has with your company. So we're talking about everything from the initial application to the final interview, even how quickly you respond to emails. It all adds up. Wow. And here's a crazy stat for you. Research shows that 78% of candidates who have a negative ex experience will tell others about it often online. Ouch. Talk about a reputation killer. Yeah. In the age of social media, that kind of negativity can spread like wildfire. And it works both ways. Right. Positive experiences get shared too. Okay. Think of it like this, a great candidate experience is like free advertising for your company. Right. It's a powerful tool for attracting top talent. Okay, I'm convinced. Mm -hmm. Treating candidates right is essential both for ethical reasons and for the health of our employer brand. Yes. But how do we actually do that? Yeah. Give me the actionable steps. One word. Communication. Okay. Keep candidates informed throughout the entire process. Let yeah. them know where they stand, even if it's just a quick email acknowledging their application or giving them a realistic timeline for a decision. It sounds so simple, yet so many companies drop the ball on this. Yeah. I've definitely been ghosted after an interview. And let me tell you, it's not a good look. <laughs> it's a common complaint, and it's completely avoidable. Right. Another crucial aspect of a positive candidate experience is streamlining the application process. Oh, don't even get me started on those online applications that feel like they were designed by a sadist. Mm -hmm. Endless forms, uploading the same documents a dozen times. It's enough to make anyone reconsider applying in the first place. You're preaching to the choir. Right. The book suggests simplifying the process as much as possible. Okay. Make it mobile friendly. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. Mm. What about when it comes to actually making the offer? Right. How do we make sure it's the right fit? for both the company and the candidate. This is where applied psychology and talent management emphasizes the importance of realistic job previews. Realistic job previews. Yes. So no more sugarcoating the role or the company culture. Precisely. It's about setting clear expectations from the get-go, oh. even if that means being upfront about the challenges of the job. Right. Remember, hiring someone who's not a good fit ultimately hurts everyone involved. It's like that old saying, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's not right. But you get my point. Yeah. It's better to be honest up front, even if it means potentially losing out on some candidates. Exactly. And here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. The book cites studies that show that while realistic job previews might lead to fewer accepted offers, those who do accept are more likely to be satisfied and stay with the company long term. So it's about quality over quantity when it comes to hiring. Absolutely, and that applies to both external and internal recruitment. Right. Speaking of which, let's shift gears and talk about the often overlooked world of promoting from within. Okay, internal recruitment. Yes. Let's unpack why this is often treated as its own separate beast. So we've tackled external recruitment, but what about those hidden gems already within our ranks? Right. Let's talk internal recruitment. It's fascinating how often companies overlook the talent they already have. Yeah. But internal recruitment is a whole different ballgame with its own set of opportunities and challenges. What makes it so unique, you'd think promoting from within would be simpler knowing the candidates already. You'd think so, right? Yeah. But familiarity can breed 
well, not contempt, but certainly assumptions. Okay. Um, applied psychology and talent management points out that internal candidates often have preconceived notions about roles and departments within their own company. Right. They might assume a promotion will be a walk in the park when in reality it requires a whole new skill set. So how do we avoid setting our internal candidates up for failure? Yeah. Those realistic job previews we talked about earlier seem even more crucial here. Absolutely. It's all about transparency and honesty. Right. Even if it means bursting someone's bubble. Yeah. Encourage open conversations about the demands of the role, the potential for growth, and even the aspects that might not be so glamorous. It's about making sure it's the right fit for their career aspirations, not just a sideways move because it seems easy. Exactly. And here's where things get really interesting. Okay. The book talks about a phenomenon called talent hoarding. Yeah. Where managers cling tightly to their top performers, even if a promotion would benefit both the employee and the company. Oh, I've seen that happen. It's like they'd rather keep someone in a role they've outgrown mm -hmm. than risk losing them to another department. Right. Talk about counterproductive. Right. And it can create a bottleneck effect, yeah. stifling innovation and growth for everyone involved. Right. The book suggests implementing clear policies around internal mobility, encouraging mentorship and cross-departmental collaboration, and creating a culture that celebrates internal promotions as a win for the entire organization. So it's about fostering a growth mindset throughout the company not just within individual departments. Exactly. And let's not forget the cost savings. Oh, yeah. Um, applied psychology and talent management highlights that internal hires often require less onboarding and training, leading to a lower cost per hire overall. Music to any HR manager's ears. Yes. Okay. So we've covered the importance of treating candidates like royalty, providing realistic job previews, and embracing the power's internal recruitment. Right. But we haven't touched on something that's top of mind for a lot of companies these days, diversity and inclusion. And it's not just a box to tick. It's about building a workforce that reflects the world we live in, mm -hmm. bringing in diverse perspectives and creating a culture of belonging for everyone. Easier said than done right. Mm -hmm. Where do we even begin? Mm. It starts with acknowledging that traditional recruitment practices often perpetuate existing biases. Okay. Applied psychology and talent management challenges us to examine our recruitment funnel at every stage. Right. Are our job descriptions inclusive? Are we sourcing candidates from diverse talent pools? Okay. Are our interview panels representative of the diversity we're aiming for? It's about questioning our assumptions and being intentional about creating a level playing field for all candidates. Exactly. And this is where data can be incredibly powerful. Okay. By tracking key metrics like the diversity of our applicant pool at each stage, we can identify areas where we might be inadvertently excluding qualified candidates. So it's about holding ourselves accountable and being willing to course correct if needed. Precisely. And it's not just about hitting quotas. It's about creating a culture where Everyone feels valued and respected for who they are. Right. When people feel like they belong, they do their best work. Yeah. It's a win-win for everyone. Absolutely. And it makes your company a much more attractive place to work. As we wrap up this deep dive into applied psychology and talent management, mm -hmm. I'm struck by how much the hiring landscape has evolved. Mm -hmm. It's no longer just about skills and experience. It's about values culture yeah. fit and creating a positive experience for every candidate who walks through our virtual doors. Couldn't have said it better myself. Right. It's about recognizing that behind every application, every interview, there's a human being with their own unique story, their own aspirations, and their own contribution to make. And finding those right people, the ones who are the perfect fit for your company, can be the difference between good and truly great. It's a journey worth taking. It certainly is. <laughs> and on that note, we'll leave you with this final thought. Okay. What one thing will you do differently in your next recruitment process based on what we've discussed today? Mm -hmm. Think about it and happy hiring.